I'm going to talk about faith. The topic is unity of the faith. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about what I mean by unity of the faith. Uh, because I think there's a lot of misconceptions uh, about what people consider faith. And faith is not on doctrine. Um, mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people say, well, I, I was born again uh, 30 years ago, and I read the Bible through every year, and I believe it from cover to cover. Well, that's not faith. That is uh, intellectual. That's something you, you believe in your mind. But faith is actually something you have in your heart. And let me say this, you do not get faith by reading the Bible through uh, every year. Every year. That's not where faith comes from. So we're going to talk about where faith. See, a lot of people in the contemporary uh, vocabulary say, well, I have faith in my doctor, or I have faith mm -hmm. uh, in uh, my political party, or I have faith in this, or I have faith in that. Well, that may be okay to say, but what we're talking about tonight is biblical faith. It's faith from the Word of God, and what I want you to see is that it's based on the Word of God and what God speaks to you. It's not, you don't get it from reading the Bible, because uh, let's look at some verses here, Romans 10.10, 10, and I'll have Sherry read it out of the New King James Version. It says, for with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Okay, so let's think about what is salvation. Well, salvation uh, is of course, being saved, being born again, but it also has other meanings. It's made whole. It is healed. Uh, and so mm -hmm. uh, we are being saved. Yes. A and I was born again when I was 13 years uh, old. Uh, and, and that's uh, many years ago, 13, I was born again. But I am continually being saved. Hallelujah. I, I looked up uh, uh, one of the verses uh, about saved, and in 23 translations on the Bible gateway, it said being saved. We are being saved, so that's a process, uh, and it's uh, it's a movement. There's a movement. This yeah. verse that we just read, it says we go from something to something, mm -hmm. so when mm -hmm. you believe, you go from something, uh, and for example, it said it moved you to righteousness, and so we moved from unrighteousness to righteousness, mm -hmm. but we could also be moved by our faith, moved from sickness to health, or we could be moved from uh, brokenness to being made whole. Oh. And so faith is something that's going to move you. And it's not something that uh, you can just read uh, in books or read in the Bible. It comes from Hearing. Where, so where does faith yeah. come from? Mm -hmm. It comes from hearing. So let's look at Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by hearing. And this is one of my favorite verses. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay. So again, I'm saying reading the Bible, uh, just reading the Bible is not where faith comes from. It's spending time with the Lord and letting him speak to you. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. It's hearing his voice. Hearing the voice. Uh, and so when when you, uh, and that doesn't mean that you're not supposed to read the Bible. Of course you are. And, and when you're reading the Bible, something may happen. Something yes. supernatural may happen. Yes. And, and that is certain verses may jump off the page and they may become alive to you. That's the Holy Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit speaking to you. And that does become faith then. Now, the other thing in, in Romans 10, 10, it said that faith is in the heart. That's so, right. So you can believe something in your mind and you can believe you, that you have a good doctor or you can believe uh, that, you, that your political party is the correct one mm -hmm. and that's who you need to vote for. But that's all in the mind. But faith, see, is in the heart. Hallelujah. Uh, and that's your inner being. 
and you cannot put faith from your mind into your heart. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, it is. You cannot put faith in your heart. You cannot strive to have faith in your heart and say, oh, this is something I believe and I want it to jump down in my heart. No, you can't. It, that's not the way it operates. The way you get faith is by hearing the word of God, hearing by the spirit of God, because the spirit of God is who gives you life. And when, the, when you hear something from the Spirit of God and you catch hold of it, uh, then it will go into your heart. But you cannot strive and force faith into your heart. Mm -hmm. You can't say, well, I want to have more faith. And so I'm going to strive for more faith. No, uh, that, that's not the way it is. So I, I want Sherry to read John 16, 13. It says, however... When he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. Okay, now when he says he's going to tell you, I'm talking about the Holy Spirit now. When the Holy Spirit is going to tell you things to come, uh, he, this may not be just dates on our calendar. This may be what the whole, what the father wants to do in your life. Mm -hmm. This is what's coming. This is what the father wants to do in your life. He, he wants to uh, heal your brokenness in your heart. Mm -hmm. He wants to give you peace in your heart. This is what mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is going to tell you what the father wants to do in your life. And that shows you the, the things to come. Now, it says that he only speaks what he hears. Well, mm -hmm. when he hears something, who is he hearing it from? He's hearing it either from Father, the Father, the Heavenly Father, or Jesus Christ, his Son. The Word and, of God. And so it's the Word of God. So <laughs> the Spirit is hearing the Word of God. He's not, he's not just imagining things. He's hearing the Word of God, and he's speaking it to you, and that becomes faith. Now, I know that all of you are Christians, but how did you become a Christian? Well, you had to have faith. And where do you get mm -hmm. faith? God gives you faith to become a Christian. Yes. Uh, Romans 12, 3 said, every man that is among us, he has given us a, a measure, measure of, of faith. faith. So you have some faith. Now, a lot of people say, well, I don't have any faith. No, if you're a Christian, you have some faith. It's the measure. And so you have the same faith I have. You have the same faith she has. Mm. God gives us faith. We cannot be born again until he gives us the faith to be born again. So we have faith. Once we're born again, we still have that faith. Now, what we can do with the faith, we can increase it. Mm. You, you know, uh, you can have a little bit of faith or you can have a lot of faith. faith. Uh, Jesus found two people that he said had great, great faith. faith. So they had increased it. Now let's just think about those two people. Uh, one of them was the uh, centurion who had a sick servant and uh, uh, I, and Jesus said, well, I'll come and heal him. I, I'm in uh, Matthew uh, 8 verses 5 through 13. Jesus said, I'll come and heal him. And, and the centurion said, oh, you don't need to do that. I'm a man under authority. I understand authority. And what he was really saying, he knew Jesus had authority. And Jesus could speak the word. And, and that would, uh, there'd be enough faith in Jesus's words to heal his servant. And that's exactly what happened. So that was great faith mm -hmm. to recognize that Jesus had uh, authority in his words. And so how do we, get faith we might not have much faith to begin with but we can increase it by hearing the word of god now it's good mm -hmm. to study the bible and as you're studying the bible there'll be times that the holy spirit will reveal the word of god to you it just becomes alive and that becomes a part of your faith or there may be times that you're just out in the woods walking and the spirit may speak to you. That's, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's what happens to me a lot. I spend a lot of time in the woods, walking trails and just walking around and, and praying. 
and, and the Holy Spirit speaks to me. And I like to go sit by the water and by a waterfall, and I have a rock that I sit on. And uh, the Lord often speaks to me by his spirit because the Holy Spirit is the God on the earth. Uh, there is the Father, and there is his Son, Jesus Christ, and the Spirit. And we're in the time that the Holy Spirit is the God on the earth. Jesus walked on the earth at a time, but now it's the Holy Spirit. And of course, living inside of you, when Jesus comes into your heart, when you invite him into your heart, uh, everybody comes in, the Father and the Son and the, and Holy, the Holy Spirit, yes. they're all in there. But it's the Spirit most of the time that speaks to you. Uh, and and that's, that's been the case in my life. Most of the time, it has been the Holy Spirit that has spoken, and he has not spoken in an audible voice. Uh, there have been times that Jesus has spoken to me and has spoken in an audible voice, but that's a very small number of times. Most of the time, it's this still small voice mm -hmm. of the Holy Spirit that I know that comes up out of my spirit. And if I'm not listening, then I, that sometimes that, that what he's saying just goes on by. And so I need to recognize the voice of the spirit and catch hold of it and know that he has spoken to me and that's faith that's in my heart mm. uh, and we have to learn to uh, incline our ear or to be sensitive to the holy spirit when he speaks and uh, i want to give uh, I'll let sherry tell you about how she learned to hear this spirit well i think i've shared this before with this group but uh I wanted to hear uh, from the Lord. And, and so in John chapter 10, it says that God's sheep uh, hear his voice and a strange voice they will not follow. And I was told by uh, a minister uh, that, that I was to say this over and over again. I hear the voice of the Lord and a strange voice I will not follow. And she said, you say it over and over and over again, day, day after day after day, until it gets, it gets down in your spirit. And then you will begin to hear uh, the voice of the Lord. And that's exactly uh, what I did. And then I began to train my ear uh, about like, what do you want me to wear today? And, and let the Holy Spirit speak to me about my clothing uh, or about my, um, my giving or about where I was to go that day. Uh, and so I began to train my spiritual ear to hear uh, the voice of the Spirit. Now, this was, this was very strange for me uh, because Brother Fred and I were both... Um, born again and spent many years in, in a um, denomination uh, that actually did not believe that, that God speaks to us today. And, and so I would get uh, comments uh, when I was trying to train my, my ear to hear, uh, I would get comments, well, God doesn't speak to you anymore. God does not speak that way anymore. Uh, you can't hear that way. And so I got very negative comments, but yet I knew in my heart uh, that I could hear from the Lord. And, and so one day, and this was this experience, I will remember the rest of my life. Uh, I, was, I was in uh, uh, my kitchen and, and cooking a meal and brother fred was there and and the lord told me to go and buy a dozen roses and i said uh okay and so i obeyed i went i left the house i went and bought the dozen roses and then the lord said he we have two hospitals here in in our town and he told me which hospital to go to i said well i don't know anyone there i don't know anyone that's sick are in the hospital, in this hospital. And, and he said, I will tell you where to go when you get there. And so I went into the lobby 
and I heard third floor. And so I got on the elevator. I went to the third floor and I said, now what? And he said, go and ask for this particular room. And so he gave me the room number and I went to the nurse's desk and I said, uh, am I able to see the person in this room? And I gave her the room number and she said, yes, you can. And so I went to that room and I opened up the door and I had my roses in my hand and I walked into the door, into the room and the, the elderly woman sat up in her bed and she said, oh Jesus, you brought me flowers. I will never forget that. And also it sealed in my heart that I could hear the voice of the Lord. And it gave me confidence. And so I moved from there. I moved from that point to the next point and to the next point until I had confidence that the Lord speaks to me and the Lord speaks to you as well. And you can build your confidence if you uh, just put it out there and say, Lord, speak to me. Uh, speak to me through the word of God. Speak to me by some other individual. Speak to me uh, this day and he will speak to you. Okay, thank you. Now, now the reason I wanted you to, to know that and to hear her story is that it's important for us to hear the Holy Spirit. And you, you said, well, uh, he doesn't speak and, and uh, uh, I don't hear him. Well, let me ask you, where does your faith come from then? Mm -hmm. you, you must not have any faith if you don't hear because it says faith comes, comes from, from hearing. hearing and hearing by the word of God. So oh, here, wow, so wow. the faith, it, this faith that I'm talking about is a biblical faith. It, it's based on the word of God. And so hearing the word of God, and it's not just, it doesn't come from reading. Oh, well, reading is good. And when you read, the Holy Spirit may speak to you yes. about what you're reading. And, yes. that, and that's a good reason to read and study the Bible. But it, the actual source of biblical faith is hearing the word of God. Well, let me give an example of that. Okay. Okay. Remember when Abraham, the Lord told him to gather up his family and to move, to leave, to move. It wasn't that he read it in a scroll somewhere. It was that he heard the voice of the Lord tell him to gather up his family, to gather up his cattle, and to move to a place that God would show him. He heard the Lord. And that's the father of yeah. our faith. And that's how we hear and increase faith. We hear the word of God and our faith increases. And now what is faith? Well. It is our connection to the supernatural realm. Oh, hallelujah. It connects us to the supernatural realm. It says uh, in Hebrews 11, 1. Now, this is all basic things, but I'm going somewhere. I, I'm building. Yeah, yeah. I, I've got a place I want to get to tonight, yeah. but I've got to build on what faith is so we know what faith is. And Hebrews 11, 1 says, faith is the substance mm. of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So it's evidence of an unseen world. So faith is Ooh, evidence hallelujah. of an unseen world. So it connects us to the unseen world. Now, we need to be connected to that. Otherwise, we well, it's just a fairy tale. Uh, it mm -hmm. just seems like a fairy tale. If we're not connected uh, to the unseen world, to the realm of God, where the or heaven, if we're not connected there and the only thing that connects us is faith and it's not hope see there's a difference between faith and hope hope is in the mind mm -hmm. this is what i'm hoping for it's in the mind but faith is in the heart mm -hmm. faith is going to move you someplace it may move you from sickness to health it mm -hmm. may move you from being broken or despaired or or discouraged mm -hmm. it'll move you to being encouraged and, and to be being an overcomer so faith is going to move you someplace good 
Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Hope is just have something in your mind you're wishing for. Mm. I'm, I'm wishing for this. I'm hoping for this. I'm wishing for this. But both of them are important because faith is the substance of the hope. So hope is up here. It's future oriented. Faith is now. It's present tense. Faith is in the heart. Faith comes from hearing and hearing by the word of God. So biblical faith, you might have something you call faith, a faith in a doctor. That's not biblical faith. It's a different kind uh, or faith in your uh, political party or, or faith in your uh, bank, uh, account. bank account or faith in your union. That, those are not based on the word of God. The word of God, when you hear the word of God, it's going to create faith. But it's about what you're hoping for in the future. I hope for that. Now, see, there's one verse that says, uh, hope that you have a helmet of hope and a breastplate of faith. Mm -hmm. Helmet of hope. So hope is kind of uh, the hope and the helmet of hope is protecting your mind. So that's in the mind. But your faith, the it, what's being protected there is the uh, breastplate of faith. And so those are, are two important things. They're closely related, but they're not in the same place. Hope is in the mind, and it's related to the future. Hope, faith is now, and it comes from hearing the word. You've heard the voice of the Spirit, and that creates faith in you. The Holy Spirit makes you alive in your spirit, man. Where does the faith reside? Uh, Romans 10, 10 mm -hmm. says that faith resides in the heart. In the heart. Okay, this is real important, real basic. Again, this is just the beginning of where I'm headed tonight, but I'm, I'm not going to go along with it. Uh, but I want to make these points that, that we get to faith by hearing the word of God. It doesn't come from studying or reading. It says hearing. You've got to hear it. You've got to train your ear hear. to hear the Holy Spirit speak to you. You've got to be sensitive and let the Holy Spirit speak and recognize his voice so that you'll know when he's speaking to you. And that's going to cause your faith to arise. See, if you are a good steward of your faith, if you are a good steward of your faith, you apply it and God will add more to it. That's what stewardship mm -hmm. is about. It's about, I'm going to take care of the little faith I have, and I'm going to grow it. I want to grow my faith. Uh, okay. It starts as a little mustard seed, and then just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and so how do we grow it? We grow it by applying it and realizing, okay, I've got faith. And, uh, you know, Peter, he stepped out on the water. He, yeah, he had yeah, enough, water, yeah. enough faith to, to step out on the water. So his faith had grown. But, you know, he did hear. Yes, he heard the voice of the Lord. Yeah, he heard Jesus he say, said, come, 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 come on. Come and on. so he could step out on the water. He had faith. Now, what, what uh, happened then to Peter? He got distracted. He didn't keep his eye on the word. He didn't keep his eye on Jesus. He got distracted by the waves, and so he fell. But praise God, he could walk on the water. There's there's two people that are, that we have evidence walked on the water. One was Jesus, Jesus and one was Peter. Peter. Uh, so he heard the word. He stepped out on the water, and, and, and he walked until he got distracted. Well, that's probably a lesson for us all. Mm -hmm, Don't mm -hmm, get mm -hmm. distracted. Stay focused. So it's important for us to stay focused. Let me, share let, you me, something. let me give this a quick example here. And that is when a baby is first born and small children, they, they hear things. They hear things that we do not hear as adults. And that's why I love to work with children. I love to teach uh, children uh, because they're so open uh, to the spirit of the Lord. And they're so open to the things of the Lord. And, and I have seen them uh, come to me. And there was a, a, a young girl. Uh, she was maybe six years old, seven years old. And she came up to me after a service. And she pointed her little finger at me. And she said, you will be 
where the Lord is. You will be where he is. And, and, and she, what was she doing? She was, she was speaking to me uh, by the spirit of the Lord. And her little finger was out there and she said, you will be where he is. And I will never forget that. It went down into my, my spirit man and, and, and I think about it. I think about it all the time. And so children are very open uh, to the spirit of the Lord because they are not distracted by the things of this world. They are not distracted by the things of this world. That's why I wanted to use that as an example. All right, good, good. Okay, so let's let's just think about the topic today is unity of the faith. Now, unity implies that there's a group of people mm -hmm. uh, that are going to come into unity. Like all of you. Like all of you and, and us. And we've given you a new name. We've given this group a new name. And the new name is the Overcomers. The overcomers. So we're all the overcomers. Amen. Okay. So the, God has this big plan. And you'll see it in uh, uh, Ephesians 4, verses 11 through 13. But it goes on down 16. All of that's real important. But I, I'm going to focus on 13 from, uh, from 11 to 13. Ephesians 4, verses 11 to 13. And, and Jesus Christ gave equipping gifts uh, to men, to men and women, to all mankind. He's gave equipping gifts, uh, and those are apostles and prophets and evangelists, pastors and teachers. So, okay, so those are the equipping gifts that train us and equip us to do what God has called us to do. That's the purpose of the equipping gifts, to train us, to raise us up, to mature us until we come into the unity of the faith. Mm. So God has this big plan and, and he, he's got the resources he gives us and connects us to the resources so that we can do the work that God has for us until we grow up and, and to the unity of the faith. So unity of the faith is a goal. It's a goal for all of us. And that, that's the topic I'm talking about today. But there are really two parts of it, unity and faith. So I've started by talking about faith so that we would all be uh, familiar with faith, with biblical faith, not faith in our doctor or faith uh, in some kind of a procedure or faith in some kind of a diet, but biblical faith based on hearing the word of God. But the other part is unity. Well, the only way you can come into unity if you agree with you, if you agree with somebody. And, and so what, mm -hmm. what Jerry and I want to do today is to challenge you to agree with this group, that this group come into agreement. So I said that in order for our faith to uh, increase, we've got to apply it. Mm -hmm. We've got to apply it. And so uh, you can apply it in believing for uh, a pair of socks or believing for food on your table. A new job. Or a new job. Yeah, that's applying it. You need to apply faith. You need to apply faith. But this is called unity of the faith. And, and so this is God's overall goal is for all of us to come into unity of the faith. So a good place for us to start is to agree with somebody in faith. Mm. And uh, so- We're going to agree with- We're going to agree with you and ask if you would like to apply your faith, we're gonna look at one verse and I'm going to have Sherry read it. It's Ephesians 4 uh, verse 17. And she'll read it out of the New King James Version. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you, give to you, and this is Ephesians 117. I'm sorry, I don't know what I said. Yeah, 117. Yeah. Oh, okay, 117. All right, let me start over. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. Okay, so this is a prayer. There's, there's more to it. Uh, there are other verses in the prayer, but this is a prayer that 
Paul prayed for a group of Christians, uh, and he called them the Ephesians. Yeah. Okay. So this is a prayer that I have prayed for myself. I've prayed this prayer. Uh, I, I have it memorized. I have yeah. the whole prayer memorized. I, I quote it a lot, and I've quoted it over myself. But And I have seen the results of, that I have received wisdom and knowledge, revelation mm -hmm. and the knowledge of him. So he has given me this uh, prayer. He has answered this prayer. This is a prayer that God answers. Amen. Glory to God. It was for a group of people. But it was for the Ephesians. But now it's going to be for the overcomers. Hallelujah. And that's going to be you and me. That's going to be us. Uh, and so if you want to, this is what I suggest. That we come as a group, whoever wants to participate in this, is to apply our faith in a group setting. Because it says the goal that God has for all of us is to come into the unity of the faith. And how can we come into the unity of the faith if we never practice? So what I'm proposing is that we practice the unity of the faith over this next week by praying this one verse over the people in this group. Ephesians 1, 17. And, and basically, it's just a prayer that the Father will give us the spirit of wisdom, of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. It's a very simple thing. Uh, I hope you can uh, commit it to your memory, that yes. you'll memorize it. I, I have memorized it. I've memorized the whole prayer. And I quote it often. And I have prayed it over myself, but mm -hmm. I have not prayed it with a group where, where we all, all are praying. We're all in agreement. See, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to come into the unity of the faith. And so we need to know what faith is. And then we need to be in union, uh, in uh, agreement with somebody. See, you look at Acts chapter 1 and 2. Uh, there were 120 people in the upper room and they were in agreement. And they prayed for approximately 10 days in agreement. Now, what I'm asking is, can we pray? Uh, for seven days, uh, this one verse, and, and maybe just speak it out a time or two whenever the Holy Spirit leads you. When you think about this verse, when you think about... And mention all of these people. Your, your brothers and sisters here. If you can uh, think about these over the next week, uh, whoever wants to, uh, then, then we'll participate. This is a practice, uh, how to practice walking in unity of the faith. Now, if you want to believe God for a million dollars, that mm -hmm. may be very good, and you can certainly do that, but it's best to practice first. You might need <laughs> to practice and believe him uh, for a meal, uh, maybe a $10 meal, or believe him for uh, a, a, your rent for the month, or a, a practice a faith. See, uh, it says, uh, he who practices righteousness is righteous Ooh, and i believe he who practices faith, faith, will, is, have faith. will have faith and so that's this is a concept this is a really important concept to god this is what he wants all of his people to do is to come together in the unity of the faith and the, so there has to be some kind of unit and the unit i see here is you and me and sherry and so I see a unit here. Why couldn't we practice uh, operating in unity of the faith? And so maybe we're just taking small steps. Now, remember, we're not expecting something uh, necessarily in the natural because this verse ties us to the supernatural yeah, realm yeah, and faith cool. ties us to the supernatural realm. And so that's why we need a prayer like this. We know this prayer is effective because Paul prayed it for the Ephesians. I know it is effective because I have prayed it over myself for mm -hmm. a lot of times, and I know that it has uh, been successful and, and that God has answered that prayer in my life. And so what I'm suggesting now is a way that we, having been in this meeting tonight, is we're not just gathering 
information. See, a lot of people just want to gather information. They go to a service on mm. Sunday morning and they gather information and they may discard it, they may forget it or whatever, but we want to move into a higher realm with this group. We want us to begin practicing uh, what God is revealing to us, what he's showing us, so that we are increasing our faith. Hallelujah. And so that, because there may be times when we're, we're practicing little steps, but maybe we need to get to the point where we can take big steps. We may, we may, may need uh, uh, money uh, to pay our rent or our, our money to pay our car payment. Well, but if you've never... Uh, ask him for a dollar. You've never uh, practiced believing God for a dollar. How can you believe for a thousand dollars? So we've got to start someplace. And this is what I'm suggesting. Faith is, it connects us to the supernatural realm. And so I know you all have faith uh, because you couldn't be born again if you didn't have faith. But so because you have faith, you can apply your faith. And as you apply your faith, you will increase your faith. Amen. You don't want to end up, uh, let's say you get uh, saved at one point in time. You don't want to end up 30 years later having the same faith you started with because God gave you the faith to begin with. Everyone among you has a measure of faith, mm -hmm. but you want to grow that faith. You have to be a good steward to grow the faith and you have to apply it. So what I'm asking, if you want to participate with us uh, to be in the unity of the faith, uh, pray this one verse, Ephesians 1, 17. Uh, you might want to commit it to your memory. If you can do that, then if you're driving down the street, you could just quote it all. Mm. And, and the, <laughs> glory to God. Let, let him give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That's all we're asking for. And, and, and what I want to know, know are, does this seem reasonable to you? Does this seem something that you could do for the next week? Uh, and it doesn't have to be every day and it doesn't have to be every minute of the day. But, but as you're led by the Holy Spirit, we need to be led by the Holy Spirit that you will pray. And not only that you will pray, but that you want us to pray for you, to pray mm -hmm. this prayer over you. Do you want all of us to be praying for you? Now, we may not have to call out everybody's name. Uh, some of you may know everybody, uh, but you may not be able to remember uh, everybody's name, but that's not important. Uh, Paul just prayed for the Ephesians. And so I'm saying you can say, we're going to pray for the overcomers in this group. And, and so what, I, what I'm asking, are, are you willing to commit to something like that? Yeah. It's not a big deal. It's not, a, but it's a practice. It's a practice for yeah. something that is eternally important to God. That he that's where he wants us to get to where we can operate in the unity of the faith. Thank you for being here today.